Hello vlog, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today we are starting a reading vlog and apparently Bobo wants to be a part of it. Say hello. Oh, and here's Mochi too. Hello, everybody gets to say hello. Hello, hello, welcome to the vlog. Okay, today I am starting a reading vlog, the secret TBR that was in my June TBR earlier this month that included these three books is happening today. And as you saw from the title, obviously you know what the secret TBR is. It's not a secret anymore. I am reading Kirsten from Kirsten's Corner's favorite books. Kirsten was one of my very first friends here on booktube and I absolutely love her channel even if we weren't like friends I would still watch it which I feel like is a big compliment because I barely honestly watch anything I have no time to watch anything but as soon as Kirsten posts I make time to watch her videos they're so well done she's so articulate in her videos you can just tell that she's very smart and she knows what she's talking about her rating system is very concise. She is my organized conscientious queen and I as a super type A person really appreciate that. She's also just a sweet gal and a wonderful friend. So yay, I'm so excited to read her favorite books even though we have slightly different tastes. Like I feel like we align on a lot of things. Mm, maybe not romance but everything else we tend to align on pretty well. For instance, we both loved One by One by Ruth Ware. Neither of us liked The Project by Courtney Summers. I know there are a ton more books that we really agree on, but <laughs> as for some romances like People We Meet on Vacation, we are drastically different with our ratings. So in this TBR, I went through Kirsten's favorite books and picked three, one of which she actually sent to me a while ago and I've been saving it for this vlog for so long and that is Nine Perfect Strangers. I am so excited to get into this finally. I have been craving reading another Leanne Moriarty book ever since I read Big Little Lies like a couple years ago so it's really great to get back into her Australian suburban world again and I'm actually already a quarter of the way through this one so I will give you an update about that in a sec but the rest of my TBR if you didn't catch my June TBR a while ago is Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson and With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Obviously Kirsten gave all of these books five stars so I decided to start with Nine Perfect Strangers because it's my most anticipated out of these three and I wanted to start it when I was at the gym so I got the audiobook of it from my library. It is a 17 hour audiobook and I don't know when I look at this book I'm like it's a paperback like she doesn't really look big like she looks normal. She looks like every other bitch like you know what I mean? <laughs> looks average but this audiobook is freaking long however it is really well done um but i do have to listen to it at a slightly slower speed because the australian accents are strong so basically in this book we are following if you could guess nine strangers and they're all at like a health and wellness cleansing resort for 10 days and we are just going through and seeing why each of them are there. And we also get the perspective of the like director, owner, head of this wellness resort. And she is kind of like not giving them exactly what they're asking for, but giving them what she thinks they need. So it's very psychological in that way. It's really interesting to see the difference between what they're coming for and what Marsha actually thinks they should <laughs> fix about their lives. So some people are coming for couples counseling and she's like, no, you need to center yourself. Some people are coming for weight loss and she's like, no, you need, you know, this. So it's interesting in that way. I do like a, a lot of the characters. I think they're very quirky, but they're all very likable so far. And I really like the setting. It feels very vacation-y. So I'm glad that I ended up saving this one for the summer because I'm craving a vacation and hearing about like 
the nice lush resort with all the like bougie things about it. I'm like loving it, but things are feeling off about the resort like they're not allowed to bring in contraband items like alcohol or chocolate or snack food um i would literally die i eat wine i eat wine hello i eat chocolate and drink wine every single day i cannot live without those two indulgences in my life it's literally why i work out so i can afford to consume chocolate and wine every single day. So I could not survive at this resort. Uh, that was the first red flag. Second was they were like drawing blood and like monitoring them. And third is there is this weird silence. Like the first five days of the 10 day cleanse, they have to be completely silent. And you can't talk to anyone. You can't write. You also can't read. I would go insane. Like, this is just not for me. So all those three things together just seem a little bit suspicious. Like, Marsha has ulterior motives here or something is just not as it seems. This is not necessarily the um, wonderful wellness retreat these people were looking for. So I'm only a quarter of the way in. I've been switching off between reading physically and then listening to the audio, sometimes at the same time. I do like the audiobook; it's pretty good. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I actually have to take some midterms today. So I canceled all my clients and I'm just taking my midterms. And after that, hopefully I'll have more time to read and I will update you when I have more thoughts. Don't mind my sweaty face. <laughs> I have been running around like a mad woman cleaning my apartment after I finished my midterm. I've literally been deep cleaning and finding anything to clean and sweating as I scrub the lime off my bathtub because I cannot stop listening to this damn audiobook. I know it's 17 hours, but girl, they go going fast. Like I'm already over halfway through things have taken a big turn in the story and i think i like it it is one of the weirdest twists i have ever read but i really like it i don't know i'm gonna keep cleaning keep listening and keep y'all updated Good morning. It is the next day. I'm sure you can hear the dogs running around. Oh my god. Mochi, what you got? Hey, guy. <laughs> so last night after I was done cleaning, I made a risotto. It was wonderful. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to eat my risotto, drink my wine, finish this book. And then Cameron got home and we realized season two of Too Hot to Handle was on Netflix. So I just watched Trash all night. But this morning while I was getting ready, I got to 85% through this book. So let me sit you down and I will tell you all about it. So I'm at the 85% mark. And honestly, the last like 30% has been very odd. This book took a huge turn and I'm honestly not sure how I feel about it. I mean, I like the overall concept, but some of the plot is a little meandering and I'm really wondering how this is gonna resolve. At some points uh, in some chapters, it seems like the author doesn't really know how to resolve it. So it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I definitely did not expect this from this book. I thought this was gonna be just like your standard, very domestic mystery, but it is getting a little off the rails, which is a good surprise. I just wish it would wrap up a little bit cleaner and a little bit quicker because it is dragging on a bit. So hopefully I will get time in between clients today to read the last 15%. Hopefully it will wrap up 
and I can give you my final rating. Right now I'm sitting at like a four star. I don't know, it's hard. It'll really depend on how the ending is executed. So I'm gonna go to work and I will see ya at some point, hopefully. Hello vlog, it's time for an update. I have finished nine perfect strangers on my lunch break today and it was nice to see the aftermath after everyone like went home from the wellness retreat see like the effects of it how they were adjusting how their connections like went on or didn't and um yeah i liked it i don't know if i was expecting some kind of like big final twist or something because the middle was so like shocking for me but it fell a little flat and overall i think the book dragged just a little bit it was a little meandering it was never like boring and dragging in that way but it was a little just meandering with the plot like i didn't know where it was gonna go and the structure and pacing was a little weird so with that i am going to give this one four stars it was definitely a fun reading experience and if you like domestic thrillers or contemporaries that get a little weird <laughs> shocking books that take you like on a weird little ride or if you like anything psychological like this book had a lot more elements of like mental health psychology therapy than i was expecting and i really loved those parts of it obviously so yeah i really enjoyed it it just didn't give me that five star feeling i think some of the pacing was off and maybe my expectations were off for the ending so that might be on me but overall it's a wonderful book i totally understand why kirsten enjoys it so much and it's one of her all-time faves i can see how this one would catch you totally off guard and if you're just on board <laughs> it would take you to five star territory no problem so with that being done after my work day today i think i'm going to get started on with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo so this is a ya contemporary about our main character this beautiful lady here on the front and i think she's of latinx descent i'm not sure I don't know because it doesn't say in the description where this is set or what her ethnicity is, but she ended up getting pregnant as a teenager and now she's just trying to live and take care of her daughter and I think she's also taking care of her abuela as well. Yeah. And she has a huge passion for cooking, so that will play into the story as well. And I'm really excited to get into this. I've heard amazing things, and I love Elizabeth Acevedo's other books, so I have a feeling I'm going to love it. And after I'm done seeing clients today, one of my friends is actually coming over and we're gonna go lay out. So I'll probably start this when we are laying out, and I'll get back to you when I have thoughts. I have had the most amazing morning. Fridays are my favorite days because I don't work on Fridays. So I kind of use them as my catch up day to do errands, all of my like little self care stuff that I like to do, like fixing my nails, actually taking time to wash my hair and curl my hair. I went to therapy, I went to the gym. Like today is a good day. I'm about to go to Costco. Like, I'm living today. And last night when my friend came over to lay out, we were talking a lot. So <laughs> I didn't get too far into with the fire on high, but there was a baseball game on. So when I came back up to hang out with Cameron afterwards, I was able to get like halfway through, maybe a little under halfway through the book and I'm happy to report that I am loving it so far. So it's actually set in Philly, which I haven't read that many books set in Philly, so it's fun to learn about. And the main character is actually Puerto Rican and black. So I think I was like wondering what like her culture was at the very beginning introducing this book. So that's what it is, a little clarification for you. And I think there are really 
valuable discussions in here and just interesting discussions about people asking her like, okay, yeah, you look black, but you're not like black, black, like what else are you? And how like invasive that is and why isn't she black enough just because she is part Puerto Rican and her family speaks Spanish and she calls her grandma like her abuela. So I really liked those discussions. It's very similar to Clap When You Land, also by Elizabeth Acevedo. So I feel like that's maybe a theme in her, in the author's own life. And she's just able to write about it really well. So I'm liking that. I'm also liking just kind of where the plot is going. I wasn't sure where this was going to go, but it's definitely like a coming of age story for our main character. She is in this culinary class in high school and she knows that she wants to pursue that, but she doesn't know if that is even possible with uh, having a child that she has to look after. And she also, I think, helps support the family home where she lives with her grandmother. And she actually grew up being raised by her grandmother. Uh, her mother passed away and then her dad is like not in the picture, but he's like kind of in the picture, but his mom like mainly raised her. So there's really interesting discussions around like the interactions between four generations. So it's like the grandma is like the head of the family and then she's obviously raised her son and now she's raising her son's child and her son's child's child. So I really like seeing those family dynamics and how everyone fits together and the nuanced ways that they affect each other's lives. Even though like the dad is not there, he very much affects their lives. Uh, he actually doesn't live in Philly, by the way, he lives in Puerto Rico. So that is cool to hear about that as well. And other than the like coming of age story, the family dynamics, there's also a little bit of a romance going on, which I think is really cute. And it talks about like balancing romance and having a intimate relationship when you already have a child with somebody else and being so young it's a very complicated but it's very interesting and i'm really enjoying it so far uh, i really like the writing style although it's not in verse uh like clap when you land but it does have very short very lyrical chapters so it almost feels like reading poetry still but it's not in verse and i think i might have said that earlier but just to let you guys know, it is not, but it is very lyrical. It almost reminds me of like Angie Thomas's style of writing um, because it has that like lyrical quality where it just flows, like you could almost hear it in a song. So it's really beautiful writing and I definitely see why Kirsten gave this five stars. I'm loving it. I'm excited to get more into it later. But as I said, I need to go to Costco. I need to run some errands. I think I'm also gonna go to Ulta because I haven't bought makeup in so long. And I honestly think it's because Tati was off of YouTube. And now that she's back, I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta get her recommendations. Like, <sighs> Tati, why are you doing this to me and my wallet? It's not fair. Anyway. I'm gonna go run errands. I don't know if I'll show you B-roll. I don't like filming when I'm trying to like get stuff done and like actually, you know, be productive. So who knows, maybe you'll get none. Maybe you'll see in like two seconds. Hello guys, I'm still out running errands, but I just went to Ulta. So I thought we would do a little mini car haul. I didn't get a lot, so I'll just show you what Tati inspired me to buy. So I remember she was talking about this dewy primer, like when it first came out, like right when all the drama was happening, but I never got a chance to try it and I forgot about it. So I'm gonna try this. Hopefully it's a dupe for the Milk Makeup, like minty one. That's what I've heard, that's what I'm looking for because I don't like spending $40 on primer, so. And then in Tati's recent video, she talked about the brow glue from NYX and I'm like, okay, these brows need something that is not going to flake all over my face. So we're trying her. And then this mascara is what I wear like every single day. And Tati recommended this to me like years ago. Oh my God, my hand, not the chip. 
I'm crying. She recommended this a long time ago, but in her most recent video, she recommended the new Essence Mascara What the Fake. So I got that and I'm gonna try that as well, but it's not waterproof. So I'm like, mm, I'm gonna need a waterproof as well for the pool. And also for the pool, this was not a Tati recommendation. This was just a Haley needs this in her life. Um, this Maui Babe tanning or browning lotion. I've been laying out without this and that's why I'm like ghostly pale even though it's almost freaking July and I, I really didn't think it was making that big of a difference like the past couple years but I guess it was because I'm not tanning nearly as much as I would when I wore this the last couple years like I was like brown like brown like my dad like I never tan as much as like my dad and my brother they are naturally just like way darker than me and my mom so maybe this like brings out my dad's side of the family jeans I don't know what she does but she works okay so gonna add this to my laying out bag and that's everything I got from Ulta so now I'm about to head to Costco and then I think I need to stop at Target as well it's just a day of errands so I'll see you later. It is so fucking hot outside. <laughs> My car literally says it's 105 degrees. So that's why my hair looks like this, but let's do a Target haul. Let me like lean out from behind my wheel. Okay, first Target Essential, California Roots Chardonnay, the big bottle, $10, we love her. We got deodorant. We got this aloe lotion that I cannot live without in the summer. And the most exciting thing, in my opinion, I got two of the new Ben & Jerry's Topped. So me and Cameron can eat this tonight for dessert. And I'm gonna make him split like both of them with me so I can try the two flavors because I wanna try both. So that's everything I got. Hopefully my ice cream does not melt in the car. I'm literally running into Costco for one thing and that is croissants. So it will take me approximately two minutes to buy croissants. Let's pray the ice cream doesn't melt. See you later. Hello vlog, I am back from running errands. I am cooking dinner and I just finished with the fire on high and this was really good i really enjoyed it it was a good ya which i rarely ever these days experience a good ya book and if you're looking for a cute contemporary that has a little bit more substance than your typical i would highly recommend this it didn't give me that five star feeling but i can't really come up with anything that i didn't like about it uh, I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was really, really good and hello, it's like beautiful. I really liked the ending. I like that our main character got to make her own choices and do what was the best for her. I think the message is really good. And yeah, I just overall really enjoyed it. So no complaints here for Elizabeth Acevedo is there ever. I am so excited to be almost finished reading her backlist so I can rank those for you guys because that one's gonna be a really difficult ranking video. These books by her are all so good. And this is coming from a girl who hates YA usually, so. High praise for this one. So next up, I'm gonna get into Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. And I actually have like a signed first edition. I don't know why I got it from Half Price Books and I didn't even know that. I just, you know, thought it looked interesting, but you know. Peter Swanson signature here. High ticket item, I guess. But this looks like a really short thriller. It sounds really interesting. So I'm excited to get into it, especially because it's one of Kirsten's favorite thrillers that she's ever read. And of course I'm the thriller queen. So let's see if we can trust Kirsten's thriller taste. This one follows a bookseller, I think. Yeah, it follows a bookseller who compiles a list of the most iconic <coughs> Boba! He compiles a list of the most iconic murders of all time that are like, you could definitely get away with them. They're the best crafted murders from every book um, that he's read. He's like a mystery aficionado. So I think there's like eight. Well, obviously there's eight, hello. There's eight 
perfect murders that he makes a list of and then someone which the whole point is we're trying to find out who starts carrying them out and committing these murders in real time so we're trying to figure out if it's the bookseller if he's being framed who's actually doing it and i'm excited to get into this one so we are going to eat dinner probably hang out tonight i don't know if i will start this but i will let you know when i do really hungover so I'm not going to do an update right now but know that I'm reading and know that I'm enjoying okay I'm at the like 40% mark and it's really good but that's the only update I can do right now without like physically vomiting on this phone okay goodbye hello vlog it is the next day i am feeling world better i am ready to go to work look at my little 80s fit for work today i just love her she's thrifted but anyway i got actually 75 percent of the way through eight perfect murders it was such the perfect cozy book that i needed when i was recovering yesterday Oh my god, it was wonderful. So I actually wrote down my, I think I was at uh 45% when I wrote this update down. So I will share those thoughts with you guys. And then I have a 75% update that I will give afterwards. So at the around the 50% mark, I was really liking that I had no idea who to trust. I could not trust the narrator. He's extremely unreliable. And I also couldn't trust the police. I felt that they were being shady as well. So I really did not know who to trust, which kept me on my toes and made me feel like the only trustworthy investigator in the situation. I really liked that. It's keeping me on the edge of my seat the entire time. And it feels like a classic, like, mystery like the books on the list like the eight perfect murders list um examples are abc murders the secret history malice of forethought all of those like very classic mysteries and this book definitely has that feel but there's a modern twist it's like kind of like a mystery within a mystery and i'm really liking that i did just want to mention though i can't remember if i said this all of the books like the eight perfect murder books are spoiled in eight perfect murders so be aware of that if you are really wanting to read one of those and you don't want to be spoiled i would definitely read that before you pick up eight perfect murders and then the only things i really have to add for my 75 percent update is that i'm really liking the vibes like the atmosphericness of the book is kicking in it's all set in like snowy dreary new england and i just like the descriptions of like walking down the pier in the cold with your coat and then going in to like eat clam chowder with a soft roll like oh the vibes are immaculate i would love to reread this in the winter time i just love the like small town mystery vibes it's really cute and i'm flying through it even with my horrible headache and hangover yesterday I got a ton of reading done into it and I'm actually almost done. I have something like 70 pages left. It's a really short book. So I'm super excited to finish it today. And um, although I don't know when I'm gonna do that, I have a super, super busy day today. So I don't know. It is quite literally the busiest day of my life. I had a gynecologist appointment at 8 a.m., which is just, the worst and then i have a client at 10 a meeting at 11 a meeting at 12 a 30 minute break to shove food in my face class from 1 30 to 4 30 another client at 4 30 then i gotta go get snacks for my gals who are coming over to watch the bachelorette at 5 30 
And then we're watching The Bachelorette at seven. So who knows if I'll be able to finish this book in there. Hopefully in my like little 10 minute breaks in between like meetings and clients, I can get a little bit further into it because I really wanna know what happens. Like I am very invested in this book. Right now at this point, 75% mark, it is a five star read. I'm loving it. So I think it's pretty safe to say at this point, we can trust Kirsten's taste, unless it just like goes downhill and has the worst ending ever. I don't know, I'll keep you posted. Hey guys, it is nearing the end of my day, but I am happy to report that I did end up finishing A Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson during my breaks in the day. And I'm giving this five stars. This was a huge shock for me. I absolutely loved it. It was so fast paced. The twists were so layered at the end. It really is like a modern Agatha Christie. So if you're looking for that style of mystery and you like that, but you want like a more of a modern twist, you would love this. It's so short as well. It's like 200 and something pages. So it's super easy to get through reading this on like a cozy holiday, like in the winter, like during a storm, something like that would be such a vibe. So highly recommend this five stars. And with that, I think it's very safe to say we can trust Kirsten from Kirsten's Corners taste in books, no doubt about it. We have had a four, a 4.5 and a five star book in this vlog. They just kept getting better and I'm honestly obsessed with all of these books. They were a lot weirder than I was expecting. Like I, I didn't know Kirsten liked a weird book. So maybe I'll go recommend her some weird books after this because A Perfect Murders and Nine Per- and wait, Nine Perfect Strangers? Is that what it's called? Eight perfect murders and nine? Huh, just put that one together. Those were both really weird books. Uh, With the Fire on High was not that weird at all. It was just really endearing and sweet, but I'm surprised Carson likes such weird books. And I think our tastes aligned pretty well. I loved every single book that I read. So I highly recommend that you guys go check all of these out. And that is gonna be it for today's vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one.